In this tutorial, you'll see how to paint a bird using both acrylic and oil. To begin, I'm using a wash brush to add some background color to the canvas. I'm applying golden glazing liquid mixed with a few different colors of acrylic paint. Golden glazing liquid increases the fluidity of the acrylic and it also causes it to dry more slowly than normal. So there's plenty of time to create a soft blended background. Before beginning this base coat, I used watercolor pencils to draw the outline of some cherry blossoms, a branch, a sparrow, and some of the details of its feathers. When I begin painting the bird, the marks made by the watercolor pencils will simply dissolve when the wet acrylic paint is painted over them. The background is now dry and I'm starting the process of base coating the sparrow using acrylic paint. I've mixed Payne's Gray and Raw Umber to make this dark color for the eye and now I'm using a small flat brush and a little raw sienna to add some color to the head. Because acrylic dries quickly, you can make fast progress. And since acrylic paint is usually much less expensive than oil, it's perfect for base coating then you can save the more expensive oil color to use for the final layers of your art. You'll end up using way less oil paint this way, which will save you money in the long run if you plan to do more oil painting in the future.
The layers of acrylic are now dry and I'm beginning to work with oil to finish the sparrow painting. I've mixed a little sap green, raw umber, and titanium white with a soft gel product called Weber Liquid Glaze Natural. The liquid glaze helps to thin the oil paint so that it's easier to work with and it greatly speeds up the drying time so that the paint dries twice as fast. It also gives the color a glossier finish. Unlike a lot of solvents typically used with oil paint, Weber Liquid Glaze Natural is non-toxic and it cleans up with soap and water. It's a great alternative to some of the harmful chemicals used by oil painters in the past. To help the bird stand out and be more of a focal point, I'm adding some deeper green color around it. I'm also using loose brush strokes to give the impression of faraway cherry blossoms in the background. I'm using two different brands of oil paint for this section. Some of the colors are Gamblin and others are Winsor Newton. For rinsing the oil paint from the brushes when I change colors, I'm using baby oil. Baby oil is really just mineral oil and it's a much safer option than turpentine. Now I'm beginning to add oil paint to the sparrow. I'm using a small flat brush for these first colors, but soon I'll be switching to a small size zero round brush in order to paint the details of the head, feathers, and body markings. Because the background is still wet, I'm not able to rest my hand against it. So I've stretched a small wood board an inch above the surface of the canvas in order to keep my hands steady while working on some of the areas with small details. The ends of this board are supported and elevated on either side of the canvas by a stack of wood blocks. You can make a creative support for your hand out of all kinds of things. As you move from one area of the painting to another, just slide the support up or down. For the eye and the dark feathers of the sparrow, I'm using Payne's Gray and Raw Umber. For the rust colored feathers, Raw Sienna and Burnt Sienna. For the lower beak, a little Naples Yellow, and for any areas that need lightening, I'm mixing in a little titanium white. Since oil paint dries slowly, it's easy to apply color in different areas of the bird and then come back over those areas later with more color, using the brush to blend and shade. I'm using the Liquid Glaze Natural to thin the colors so that it's easier to paint little details like the thin lines on the wing and the irregular stripe pattern on the sparrow's upper back.
When I'm close to being finished, I turn the painting and my reference photo upside down. Looking at the painting and the photo from a different perspective will often show things that need correction. Then I make some quick touch-ups while the canvas is still in the upside down position. Once finished, turn the canvas right side up again, dry in a dust-free area, and then it's ready to display.